Hello everyone. Welcome to DevOps Info. In the last video, we had a look at the GitHub. Today, we'll run through an example of one component to automate the tasks through GitHub, which is GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is a flexible way to automate nearly every aspect of the software workflow. You can automate testing, continuously deploy, review code, manage issues, and pull requests. The best part of the workflow are stored as a code in your repository and easily shared and can be reused across the teams. So today in this video, we are going to have a look at the description of the GitHub actions, types of actions, and where to find them. And also finally, we are going to see an example of how to create a basic GitHub action and use that action in a workflow. Basically, GitHub Actions optimize the code delivery from time to time, from deployment to the final stage. Suppose you manage a team that is developing a website which is focused on the end customer and uh, you're getting a pressure from the upper management like a uh, high quality website needs to be published soon. So you need to make sure that your team is producing a code which is being tested and then deployed quickly within the timeline. And also on top of that, the IT department wants to automate the creation of the project infrastructure. So like there is an option where you can use the continuous integration and the continuous delivery, which will automate the build, test and deployment tasks. And as a result of that, you can also use an infrastructure as a code to automate the IT tasks. There are several tools which is available to help to achieve these goals. Since in the previous video we had a look at the GitHub, I thought it's a good idea to give some uh, demonstration about the GitHub actions, which we can effectively use in our code GitHub code repository. So in the GitHub actions, um, we can look into what are the automations which 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 is uh, possible from from them. GitHub is basically, you know, uh, actions basically designed to help a team of uh, uh, developers and uh, DevOps engineers to do uh, build and deploy the applications quickly. Uh, and as a result of this, the GitHub actions has uh, two main features. The first one is the communication. So with the GitHub actions, we can consider making an easy communication for a team of developers to communicate about the software. Uh, development uh, stages, for example, the code reviews, uh, which is in the pull request, GitHub issues, uh, project boards, wikis, notifications, and etc. And when talking about the automation, GitHub action lets our team to automate the workflows at every step in the software development process, from the integration to the delivery deployment. It also lets us to automate the adding labels, pull requests, and checking for stale issues and pull requests. For example, uh, through the automation, we can ensure that uh, if the code passes all the tests and perform a code quality and compliance checks and ensure that the software passes all the integration tests. Check the code and the dependencies for any security issues. So all these things can be completely done in the uh, GitHub uh, actions. So basically, GitHub Actions are a packaged scripts, which is uh, present to automate the, the tasks in the software uh, development workflow, which is through the GitHub. We can configure GitHub Actions to trigger a complex workflow that meets your organization needs. Um, the result is reliable. Of course, it's very sustainable and automated workflow. So where we can find the GitHub Actions? The GitHub Actions are scripts that is present in a YAML data format. And each repository has an action tab that provides a quick and easy way to get started with setting up your first script. If you see a workflow, for example, that you might be a great uh, thing to start, you can just select a configure button and then uh, start editing the YAML file, which we are going to have a look at uh, in a few minutes. Um, and also one more important point to note that is the many GitHub actions are open source and available for anyone who wants to use them. So it's it's very important to know that uh, just like any other open source software, 
uh, you need to carefully check and evaluate them before doing it on the production. So when coming to talk about the GitHub actions, there are two types, the container actions and the JavaScript actions. So with the container actions, the environment is actually a part of the code. Uh, and that these actions, the container actions can only be run in the Linux environment that GitHub hosts at this moment. So container action supports many different languages. And the second one is the JavaScript actions. The JavaScript actions don't include the environment in the code. Basically, they don't have the environment. So you have the option to specify which environment to execute. It can be Azure or AWS. You can do that. You can run even in a VM that runs in cloud, for example, uh, as we talked about uh, like Azure, AWS or Google Cloud, and also uh, it can run on-premise. So these JavaScript actions support the Linux OS, Mac OS, and also the Windows environment. So uh, this is uh, having talked about the overview, let's uh, just have a look at the place where we can go and uh, see the GitHub actions. So uh, just going back, um, here is the GitHub uh, repository. Uh, this is the GitHub uh, project I have. So here, um, let's say I'm just clicking on uh, the repository where I have not made any tests. Um, I can just go and select this infrastructure as a code which was created in the previous test. So here I just go and click on actions. Um, in the actions, I can create a new workflow, for example, and in the new workflow, you have these default actions which can be used. For example, uh, you can choose a workflow. By default, it gives uh, some suggestion for the repository based on uh, the file that you have it uh, in them. Uh, and then you have the categories. For example, the first category is suggested for the repository. Uh, the second one is the deployment. If you are going to use a deployment, as I said, you see the Node.js can be deployed to cloud instance, which is Azure. And also we have Amazon ECS. Uh, yeah, and also you have uh, the Google Cloud. So uh, this is for the deployment. And uh, if, if at all, if it is going to be for security, yes, there is something uh, which pops up for the security, you can go and select. And for continuous integration, we have, and for even for the automation, there are a lot of things uh, which you can select from the default workflow which is present. Uh, so at the bottom, you also have an option to browse the all categories, just in case if you uh, see any in anything which is uh, uh, which is uh, suiting your requirement, you can just go ahead and uh, click on configure. And the moment when you click on configure, you can start building them. Uh, so the YAML file opens it up and then you can start building them based on your requirement. So this is the place where you can go and have a look at the actions. So for the demo of this uh, video, that is a very good um, article. Uh, that is a very good example from the GitHub uh, learning page. So where they give an example of uh, creating a GitHub action and use it in a workflow. So it's just how to start this course is like you have to go here and uh, click on use this template and the moment when you use this template um, it will just prompt you to create a repository so when you're talking about creating a repository it's very important to note that you have to create only a public repository because uh, the private repositories will use actions in minutes so you won't be able to uh, use more uh, and you will be charged. Uh, uh, so it's, it's always better to use a public repository, which is free. Uh, so if you're doing a demo, of course, you can do a public repository. And just in case if you're doing for your production, of, uh, it's, it's, uh, you can choose the private repositories. So uh, and then the first thing is here, they are creating a workflow file. So in the workflow file, uh, just uh, you need to just go to the browser tab. And in the browser tab, and you can just go to the repository. And in the repository, uh, we just go to the code tab. In the code tab, you just click on the drop down and select the work workflow branch. Uh, so I have already done this demo. I will show you. Uh, uh, just following this, I have done this. Uh, so the moment when you go into the code tab, for example, uh, I just go back to my repository. 
and in the repository i just select github container actions this is the one which i created so in the code um, here there is a welcome welcome workflow that, that's what i selected and then select after selecting the welcome workflow uh, you just need to copy this uh, copy this file and do a commit the moment when you copy this file and do a commit the next step is uh, uh, you need to uh, do uh, you need to add a job pair workflow flag workflow flag workflow file uh, sorry so uh, what i did is i can show you that i just go into the uh, code and click on the drop down and select the uh, select the welcome workflow and the welcome workflow i i did the changes i can also see the changes i can show you so i go into the github in the github i have the uh, workflows in the workflows the first one is the initial commit which is zero start.yaml the one which uh, we, we see here i have been created over here so that's what i added here so after going back the second one is uh, we have just created a workflow and uh, the second step is add a job to a workflow so what it is like uh, after creating a workflow uh, this is like post welcome command uh, we are giving a workflow name and then you are just going to uh, okay the most important thing is like the moment when you do this you have to commit your changes and the moment when you click on commit your changes you come to the next page uh, next step which is going to you're, you're going to use the uh, you're going to add a job to the workflow file adding a job to the workflow file is nothing you just go to the same yaml file and in the yaml file just copy and uh, paste this uh, or you can update it because here if you see in the previous one we have just created a workflow on top of that workflow what you are doing is you are just creating a job so in the job you are just giving a post welcome command so after that you are going to click on a start welcome commit on top right corner of the workflow editor you will you will see on the right floor you will you will see an option to commit so the moment when you do a start commit it will create a, a job to the workflow i can show that in the code i uh, in in in, uh, in the workflows i just go back i see i have created a job uh, this is the first one create a workflow yaml file so in the workflow yaml file i just created uh, what we saw and after that what i did is uh, just going back to the workflow yaml file and adding a job so after adding a job uh, you you see the um, you see the file uh, which uh, which which we created the welcome workflow so after that the third action what we are going to do is add actions to a workflow so adding the action is the first one was like we created a workflow adding a job and the last thing is is going to add an action uh, so the moment after you add an action uh, you also need to click on start commit uh, so which will be uh, committing the the, the files and the last thing is you go, uh, the fourth part is go, you're going to do a merging the workflow. So merging the workflow also, uh, uh, you need to go into the pull request and in the pull request, you need to go and click on uh, the merge pull request. The moment when you merge the pull request, um, the merge will be successful and there will be an option to delete the branch. It's always recommended to delete a branch uh, after you created the, uh, created the uh, merging tasks so after that uh, you can create always a, another branch if you want to do any commits or merge of a play master file and the last thing is trigger the workflow you can see all these five steps i have created uh, i i did not do anything i just followed the same uh, um, example it's very simple it's super simple you what you need to do is just uh, create a project in the github as described in the previous video and then log in into the github with your account uh, just paste this url on the same browser and you have an option to use this template the moment when you use this template i can click and show you the moment when i click on use this template it is just bringing me to the page where i can create a repository give a description and just choose the public and after that it is going to be the same steps whatever we saw saw here just follow the same steps blindly and it is going to come so for example if you see here i have the option to 
I have the option, uh, I have created everything. For example, when I go to workflow, I see like first uh, a workflow is created, a job is added, action is added, merging the pull request, trigger is done, and finally you see the welcome YAML file. So this is the final welcome YAML file which is created. You see like, um, you see, okay, uh, welcome to the repository. This is the message we, we get uh, if, if someone is committing uh, uh, to the, uh, to the file uh, committing to your uh, repository so this is the uh, example that we had a look at uh, how to uh, how to create a how to create a file uh, how to create a github action and and merge them into your uh, uh, into uh, into a workflow so a recap of all the tasks that we have seen today is like uh, first what we had a look at uh, uh, about the github action and then we we had an example of uh, we had a look at how to create a GitHub actions in the workflow file, and then how to see the workflow and what are the options we have it in the default template. With this, uh, we can we also see like we were able to create the event trigger job and steps to the workflow, and finally uh, we were able to automate uh, the the option through this uh, GitHub actions. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe for more information like this.